Now before we start our upgrade of vCenter server, I want to be running the installer as the service account that I'm currently using for my vCenter services. So I'm going to just get out of the installer here and I'm going to go into my DVD drive. And what I'm going to do is hold down shift on my keyboard, right click on auto run and select run as different user. So here I'm going to type in the user account that is currently running the vCenter services. And now I'm going to click on vCenter and install. And we'll click OK. Now here, like in the other wizards, it's detected an earlier version of vCenter server. And it's just alerting you that the, that vCenter server is going to be upgraded to server 5.5 if you continue. So that's what we want to do. We'll click Next. Accept the license agreement. Now my vCenter server currently does not have a license key. It's still running in evaluation mode. So that's why we're going to see this window here. If you have a current version 5.0 or 5.1 license, they're compatible with 5.5 and uses the same license key settings. If you're running a version 4, uh, you're going to have to request new keys to get up to version 5 uh, license key standard. So I'm just going to continue in my evaluation mode here. I'm going to click Next. And we just warned here that previous versions of the vCenter server are no longer valid. So here it's just talking about uh, version 4.0 license keys. That's fine. Um, we don't have any version 4 and this tutorial is uh, about upgrading version 5.1 to 5.5. So I'll select Yes. And here we're presented with the database server credentials. There's not much that we can change here as it's uh, grayed out because it's using the integrated Windows authentication. I'll just click Next. Now because Update Manager 5.1 is still installed, this window just explains that once you've upgraded your vCenter to 5.5, you will not be able to use Update Manager 5.1. So once we've finished our vCenter upgrade, we'll be upgrading our vSphere Update Manager as well. So I'll click OK. And we want to upgrade the existing vCenter server database. And you have to tick this box here to say I've taken a backup of the existing vCenter server database and SSL certificates. If you don't tick this box, you can see down here that the Next button is grayed out. So I'll tick this box and click Next. Now the vCenter agent that sits on your ESXi hosts, you have an option here to automatically upgrade them or manually upgrade them. So I'm going to select Manual here, just uh, we can do a little bit more uh, control over it and uh, for demo purposes as well. So I'll just click Next. And here we're presented with our vCenter service account that we want vCenter to run as. So um, because we started this installation as the service account vCenter service, which is uh, the account that I'm using, I'll just type in my password for this account. Uh, so we've got our vCenter service account here and we've got the fully qualified domain name of our vCenter server. I'll click Next. So these are all the ports that we're running for vCenter. It would have picked up the previous ports that I've been using in vCenter 5.1. So I don't want to make any changes here. I'll click Next. And in my lab, I don't have any more than 100 hosts or 100 virtual machines. So I'm just going to select Small here for the Java virtual memory. Um, but select Medium or Large depending on how many hosts and how many virtual machines you have installed in your environment. I'll click Next. And we're going to register this vCenter with a single sign-on. So single sign-on's already been upgraded to 5.5. So I'm just going to use the administrator domain account, uh, which has full access in SSO from uh, previous 5.1. And the lookup service should be pre-populated with the correct information here. Uh, you shouldn't have to change anything there. And we'll click Next. Now this is the fingerprint of the SSL certificate on the SSO lookup service. So I'll just click yes to accept and continue on this. Now the vCenter inventory service is installed on my local vCenter server and it is using the default port of 10443. So I don't need to change anything for the vCenter inventory service URL. I'll just click next. And we're going to upgrade our vCenter server which is installed in C drive, program files, VMware, slash infrastructure. 
So clicking install now is going to begin the upgrade process. So I'll click install and let it run. Now our vCenter server has been uh, upgraded successfully. So we'll click finish to exit this wizard. So now we'll move on to the vSphere web client. So we'll be upgrading this now. We'll click OK. So once again, it's detected that an earlier version of the web client is installed and that it will be upgraded to web client 5.5. So I'll click Next here. And again, we'll accept the license agreement. It's picked up the ports of the previous installation. We'll click Next. And once again, we'll put in our administrator credentials here. This will register the web client to our SSO. And the lookup service URL is pre-populated once again as well. So we'll uh, click next. We'll say yes to accept the fingerprint of the SSL lookup service certificate. And we'll begin the upgrade process. Okay, the upgrade has completed successfully. So I'll click finish. And it just says here to allow a few minutes just to let all the services start up successfully. And then you can go on and use the vSphere web client. So I'll click OK. And moving right along, we'll go through and upgrade our vSphere client now. We'll click OK. We'll click Next. And accept the license agreement. Click Next. I will install into the default location and it's also where I've got my previous vSphere client installed so I'll click next and install I'll leave this on automatically close and attempt to restart the application so I'll just click OK and the vSphere client has been upgraded so I'll click finish here and last but not least, we will go through and upgrade our Update Manager. So it detects that vSphere Update Manager is already installed and clicking OK will upgrade to version 5.5, .5, which is what we want. We'll click Next here, accept the license agreement. So in this window, it's just telling us that once Update Manager is upgraded to 5.5, .5, your VM guest OS patch baselines, host upgrade baselines and files, and ESX 3.5 host patches and baselines are going to be removed. And you've got also the option here to download updates uh, immediately after the installation. So I'm going to untick that because uh, I don't want it to download immediately. And we'll click Next. So here I've got my vCenter server IP address, which is pre-populated. Also, the username or user account here is pre-populated. This is the account that I'm running the Update Manager service with. So I'll just enter in my password and click Next. So the DSN that we've got set up here, it's a 32-bit DSN. It's set up to use integrated Windows authentication. So we don't have any other options we could do on this screen here, so we'll click Next. And I want to upgrade my Update Manager database and once again, similar with vCenter, if you don't tick this box here that you've taken a backup of the existing Update Manager database, you will not be able to select Next. So we'll tick that and click Next. So like in previous versions, you have the same options here of how you want Update Manager to be presented on the network, either by fully qualified domain name or via IP addressing. So I'll leave mine as fully qualified domain name. Just make sure that your DNS is set up and working correctly. Just make sure your DNS is set up correctly, that you can ping this uh, fully qualified domain name and it resolves to an IP address. The ports down here are the existing ports that were set up in my update manager. I believe they are the default ports. So we're happy with that. We're going to click next. And we'll click install. The installation will begin. So the Update Manager service is currently running. So I'm just going to say automatically close and attempt to restart the application here and click OK. OK, so this is finished successfully. We'll click Finish. 
And basically what we've done, we've updated all our base components of vSphere 5.5. So now it's going to be time to jump in and test that everything is working correctly. So I'm going to exit out of the installer, close these windows. And first up, we'll jump into the vSphere web client. Okay, in here I'm going to log in as Okay, in here I'm going to log in as my administrator account. Put my password. Okay, we've logged into our vSphere web client. So, let's just click on this vCenter. And you can see here I've got my one vCenter server registered. And this is the vCenter server that we've upgraded. So you can see here on the right side that version information is the version 5.5. .5. So that looks very good. If I double click on the vCenter server and I go into my hosts. So we can see here that I've got my VM ESXi1 host connected. This host is actually running version 5.1. So as you can see here on the right side, VMware ESXi 5.1. So our web client is working successfully. So I'll minimize this and let's jump into our vSphere client. So as you'll notice here, when you first launch your vSphere 5.5 client, it notifies you that all the new vSphere features are only available through the vSphere web client. The traditional vSphere client will continue to operate, supporting the same feature set as vSphere 5, but not exposing any of the new features in vSphere 5.5. The client is still used for vSphere Update Manager and Host Client, along with a few solutions, e.g. Site Recovery Manager. So let's log into this. Okay, and first thing we want to do is install the plugin for Update Manager. So I'll click on Plugins, Manage Plugins. Find the vSphere Update Manager extension here and download and install it. So basic installation, accept the license agreement, next. It notifies you here that Update Manager is going to be installed in basically the same path except for an additional plugins folder and then Update Manager 5.5 .5 folder. So we'll click install and we'll click finish. So as you can see here, the Update Manager plugin has been enabled. And up the top center section here, you can see the Update Manager tab has been re-enabled again as well. So we'll click Close. And we can see here our vCenter server 5.5. If we scroll through, we can see our ESXi server. And if we now go over to Update Manager, can see that all of our baselines have been removed. I did have one baseline there before, which was upgrading my previous ESXi host from 5.0 to 5.1. So that's now been removed. And what we can do now is create a baseline for upgrading our ESXi server from 5.1 up to 5.5. .5. So we'll go over to our admin view and we'll go to ESXi images. We'll select import ESXi image, browse to the ESXi image. I'll select my image here, select open, next. I'll install the certificate and click ignore. And so that's been uploaded successfully now, we'll click next. And we'll just give our baseline a new name. and click finish. So we'll click now on compliance view and what we're going to do is attach that baseline we've just created to our VM ESXi1 host which is currently running 5.1. So I'll click attach, select my baseline, click attach and we'll click on scan and we'll select upgrades and scan 
So as you can see now, the ESXi host is uh, non-compliant. So what we'll do now is we'll click on Remediate and have our ESXi server upgrade to 5.5. So the upgrade baseline is selected. The baseline was the one we created previous, which was ESXi 5.5. And it's going to be applied to my host VM ESXi1, which is running 5.1, and upgrade to 5.5. So we'll click Next. Accept the license agreement. We'll click remove any installed third party software that's incompatible. And we'll click next. We'll want to run the upgrade now. I'll just give the task a description. And we'll click next. I don't have any virtual machines configured at this stage. So I'm just going to click on next here and accept the defaults. But you can select some alternate power states for virtual machines as the host is going to go into maintenance mode and if you have a cluster and if you have HA enabled with DRS all your virtual machines will be migrated off to another host. So I'm going to click next and our upgrades here with the baseline ESXi 5.5 so I'm going to click finish and get this task underway and we can monitor the task down here in the bottom section under recent tasks we can see here that my host has already upgraded to 5.5 and is just in the startup process once it's started up it will auto connect back to vCenter and the uh, existing task should complete so my host has booted up successfully now. Uh, it's on 5.5, so I'm just going to switch back to vCenter. And our task has completed successfully. So now we have our ESXi host upgraded to version 5.5, as we can see up here in the top. And all components are looking healthy. So I'm going to wrap up this vSphere 5.5 upgrade video now. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you in our next video. Thanks again for watching.